Okay, folks, Matrix Live, live from Matrix Towers and the internet. Uh, we've got three demos for you today, um, maybe four, but I'm only going to show three right now. Uh, we've got Mauro and Francois, who are going to talk about Element X and the new features that we have there. Timo um, is going to call about embedded um, uh, call link sharing. And a last minute addition, um, Quentin is going to take us through the greatest, uh, latest and greatest UI changes in uh, the Matrix Authentication Service. So let's start with Element X. Uh, Mauro and Francois, are you out there? Yeah, we're here. Uh, so for this demo, pretty much, uh, uh, we're going to show some of the new features that uh, we developed for uh, Element X. And uh, of course, these features that you will see are on both platforms, but to give a uh, Adequate share of show time for these two Amazon platforms. Uh, uh, we will show some of them on iOS and some of them on Android, but of course, you will be able to find them on both platforms. Uh, so, yeah, let's start with iOS. Just give me a time to share the simulator window. Okay. So, first of all, sometimes maybe you get flooded with a lot of uh, uh, notifications in different rooms, and in some of them, uh, maybe you don't really care about what is being said in that specific moment, or maybe someone is just spamming you and is a bit annoying, like this guy, Mauro Nito here, I wonder who he is, and which is just sending me hi and hellos all the time. And maybe I don't want to mute the room yet, but I feel like I don't want to see the room. I, I, I already know what is in the content of the room, and I just want to uh, pretty much see it has already been read. And now you can do that. You can just mark the room as read. You just press this simple button, and without even having to enter the room and check the content, you can just mark it as read, and it will be already be marked as such. Uh, of course, the inverse can also be done. For example, you have, uh, for a mistake, just read a room that uh, contains some content that was quite involving, and you didn't have the time to read it. And you, you're pretty much wondering, OK, I want to revisit this room, but maybe I can forget about it. There's a way in which I can uh, uh, check the room as, as an red again. And yeah, you can now also do that. If a room has not been, uh, has already been read, you can now mark it as red, as an red. And yeah, now the room will be considered as an unread room. So you can check its content later, maybe when you have more time to check that very important involved messages that you really need to read for work, maybe. Um, another important feature that we developed is the fact that you can now mark a room as a favorite room. So you can do either that here by setting this flag inside the room details, or if you prefer, you can actually also do directly here by using the long press and then using the favorite button on the room. Now, this might seem a bit, uh, um, let's say, living on its own. Doesn't seem like it's really providing anything on element tax. But of course, when you're marking this, you're also marking it across all your uh, account data. So this will be seen on all your clients, also on element web. But most importantly, this is something that uh, will be very useful and will actually make a lot of sense when we will show in the future, not now. Uh, another another awesome feature that we're working on, which are filters, which will, which are pretty much technically already done, but we're just exploring on how to make them perfectly perfect uh, UI and UX wise. So stay tuned for uh, when we show them, because with the filters you will be able to pretty much filter all the rooms according to a specific uh, um, criteria, like for example, your favorite rooms or your unread rooms, or maybe you can even chain some of these criteria together. So like seeing all your unread favorite rooms and so on. But yeah, stay tuned for uh, the filters because they are coming very, very soon. And yeah, for the rest to Francois. Yep, hello, can you hear me? Yep. Thanks. So I will be sharing my screen. And can you see my screen? Okay, yes. nice. Okay, so uh, on the left, I have a regular Element Web client, and on the right, uh, I have the latest version of Element X Android. So now I am showing uh, the typing notification uh, feature and the presence one, which are uh, related. So first, if I stop 
start typing on element 12, typing a message, you can see on element 6 as uh, a typing notification showing uh, at the bottom of the screen. And it will disappear uh, when I will stop typing, of course. And I can do the same uh, from element 6. So you can see uh, here that the typing notification showed on element web. So uh, now we have introduced a new a new settings which are here, which is called shared presence, which if it's turned off um, disabled sending and receiving read receipts and typing a notification in the same time. So if I disable it and get back to my room, no, if I am typing, I don't receive any notification. And if I send this message, you can see uh, even if I have seen the message on Element X, that my read receipt is not uh, coming down here. So that's what is expected. And now if I just re-able presence, you can see my read receipt just cut down. So yeah, basically that's uh, it. Very cool. When um, the, these are these are on the the nightlies or the test flights or are they when when, when are they out um, more more widely? Uh, they are on the nightly right now, and probably some of these uh, will get released soon. But some other of them probably we will wait also for the filters to be completed. Right. Okay. So it's more coherent overall. Got it. All right. Any questions? Um, on which position is the room when you enter it um, when it is unread? Or the the read marker is is uh, where? Is it just at the end? Yeah, it's still at the end. At some point, we want to to open the timeline on the read marker, but uh, but not now. Still, we are opening the room on the last messages. Okay, cool. All right, Mario, Francois, thank you. Um, next up, Timo, are you there? Yes, uh, not sharing my screen yet, but I, I will soon. Give me a second. So basically, to have case in the video now, we need to do it like this. So I'm on a normal private room, and I on the call. Everybody can see me. Um, we wait until the state events are set, and now we are in the call. Uh, we can see that we're in a room and there is no way to bring anybody else in this call. So it's a private room. So that's also what you expect from Matrix. Only those three people can ever participate in the call. And the only way to get somebody else in this room is to invite them by the Matrix ID. Um, so you can have a call with multiple Matrix users that have a client that is set up with element call or any kind of matrix RTC call, but there is no way to bring anybody external into this um, where who doesn't know anything about matrix. <laughs> so if we go into this public link generation room, we're kind of like at the point where we actually do the demo. Um, we can also start a call. Um, and here's another small thing. So um, element web will now ask you um, if there's multiple options, like if your client is configured to use a new group call experience, but also Jitsi, um, you get this option menu. We have to use um, element call in this case. Turn on my camera again and join the call. Now we have this new button here. So if I press the share call link, we get the normal share dialog from element web, which I hope will get a compound redesign soonish or at some point in time. Then um, this basically also looks uh, very much aligned to the rest of Element Web. And I can copy this link and paste it in here. And we can investigate it. So basically, we see that it's just a normal um, Element Call link, in this case from Net Netlify build, um, and it contains encryption. And it also has this via service, so we know how to join this room. So I press Enter for now. It's asking me for a username, I call it person who has never heard of Matrix. I join the room. You're muted, you know. Um, uh, 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 Matthew's here. 
and we get an echo, which we prohibit by muting here. Um, so since I'm doing the, the recording anyways, that's fine, because I hope this time it works. Um, so we are now here in a room and I'm joined with this uh, simple link and Matthew and Amadine, who basically know nothing about Matrix, also could join because they just took the link, but they probably cannot hear me. Um, so then, um, oh no, I'm also getting another call now, which I need to decline, that is entirely unrelated to, to the demo. Um, so perfect, then um, we can have a quick look at the link again, or just to sum up how this whole concept works in general. So we have um, a dedicated home server just for guest accounts. And Matthew and Emma Dean joined this dedicated home server with the link and we're allowed to create a new account there. And those are the two um, joint accounts here on the right hand side, Emma Dean and Matthew. And um, then over Federation, they took the SPA to join this room, which um, is encrypted, but still public, um, to be able to participate in the call without knowing anything about Matrix because they basically got a new account on the fly. And this being a separated dedicated home server is kind of cool because it doesn't really disturb your own home server and it can be a mess there. Multiple people can be created. You can wipe it at some point in time and you don't really have to pay as much, at much attention then to a normal home server. And in the future there, of course, is the plan that we, sorry, another call. Of course, it's the plan that we um, want to have the option to also have private rooms and there's things like knocking around which could be used that those guest users would then knock on the room and you need to let them in or we're also talking about um, some join tokens where you can pass a token and then this token can be used to automatically join the room but only this one specific room um, and yeah there are multiple options cool and then there's one more thing which i'll show and that is that if you now switch the theme from element web to a light theme, then we finally have element call also in a white theme, which is super cool. So if I run here, it should basically work exactly the same, except that it's all um, light themed. Cool. Thanks for listening. Okay, right. thanks, Dimo. And uh, Neil, back to you. Um, okay, well, back to or on to Quentin. Hello. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen. So, you do, don't use element call. <laughs> does everything work on my side, right? I can hear okay. you. You can hear me. You can see my screen, right? Can we can? Okay. Um, so um, we're. You're probably aware that uh, there's this ongoing move to um, to IDC login for Matrix clients, and that is being implemented through a complete rewrite of. Uh, whatever authentication system that uh, Synapse was using uh, through a third party, uh, through a, another project called the Matrix Authentication Service. And I just wanted to show you uh, how it looks like right now. So here I have um, an ele a classic element web with just uh, one lab flag enabled, which is um, an experimental uh, support for IDC native login. So if I could continue here. Um, here I see you see the, the login screen from the authentication service. I'm just going to go continue with my company uh, SSO. And here I'm granted with this uh, screen that you probably have already seen uh, that lets me know um, that Element is going wants to access my account and what it's going to be able to access. If I could continue, um, I'm logged in. Uh, I'm not going to bother with uh, device verification now. It's just um, it's just a test box. Um, but one big change that we have is that um, now um, everything related to my account, so email addresses, uh, my password, and stuff like that, is um, managed in a separate UI managed by your home server. And you can access this UI from uh, from the Element Web settings. So if I go there. This is uh, the UI from your home server, from the Matrix Authentication Service. Um, there are still a bunch of um, places where it's a bit uh, confusing and ugly, but uh, a lot of it improved recently. So for example, if I want to uh, add an email address here, it looks like that. I'm getting greeted, hopefully, does that work? Yes. 
uh, with this um, super um, email verification code. Obviously, it's not it's my dev box, so I, it doesn't really send an email. I'm just gonna grab the code here, and that works. And now I have an email here, and uh, I can obviously also like delete this email address. One really nice thing uh, that I uh, like with this page is that because of compounds, uh, the, the work from the compound team, this model box looks, um, if I go on a model um, and look at it, it's, it's probably something that looks native on mobile. So it's a model on, on desktop and this, uh, whatever this bottom sheet is being called on, on mobile. Uh, so next, if I look at my session list, so I can see here that um, I just logged in on uh, Elements on Chrome on macOS. So you have a lot more information here, this list. If you've seen this list before, uh, it's now a lot more digestible. Um, there's still, still a lot to do here, but um, I can log out a remote session. So if I sign out, I think, yeah, you see now my element is being signed out here. Um, and yeah, that's about what I wanted to show now, uh, the, those UI improvements. Very cool. What's, um, what, what remains? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, so the, the deployment of the of service is still a bit rough, but the, the documentation for it uh, really greatly, greatly improved in the last few months. And also uh, there's a lot of new troubleshooting tools whenever, uh, if you're trying to develop, uh, to um, deploy the authentication service yourself. Uh, we've seen a lot of people in the community actually trying it out and just, uh, it works. Um, please note that it's also um, lacking a lot of features if you're relying on user and password, local user and password right now, but if you're, using an, uh, an upstream SSO, uh, login via Google, whatever, uh, it should work fine, honestly. Um, there are still rough edges in some um, UI parts, but uh, if you're adventurous enough, that should be good for you. Very cool, Quentin, thank you. And it's nice to hear on multiple demos, Compound um, getting, getting a lot of love. Um, so congrats for everyone involved in that, uh, particularly Robin. All right, I think that's the end. There may be a super secret extra uh, async demo. Uh, time will tell. But for Matrix Life for now, signing off. What's the super secret async demo, Neil? It's a super secret, Matthew. It might come next month instead. OK. Well, in which case, uh, we're only seven minutes over. Shall we like, flee whilst we can? Good luck, everybody. Thanks. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.